Good morning and welcome to Wednesday's Right Stuff. I'm Matthew Wright. It's the 10th of March, which is uh, National No Smoking Day. Uh, it's also Osama Bin Laden's uh, 53rd birthday. Uh, let's hope he has a lousy one, uh, if he's still alive. <laughs> but, but there is much, much, much more important <laughs> stuff afoot than all of that. If you were watching yesterday, you'd have heard me talking to Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen about a bizarre fitness machine I'd seen, a cross between a horse's saddle and a bucking bronco. It's called an iJoy, it costs about a monkey, that's 500 pounds to you, madam. And blow me, they've given us one. And now, in a cynical bid to drive up ratings, <laughs> we're gonna give you a quick demonstration. I say we, I mean Kirsty. Okay, lads, get your video recorders on now. Ride and cowgirl! <laughs> Job and it looks like Kirsty really loves hers. <laughs> I, I don't know how you turn it off. What I do know is the iJoy has uh, four speeds a slow, medium, fast, and inappropriate for daytime television. <laughs> You've made an old man very happy, Kirsty. You can go back into your booth Thank now. You. Thank you. Oh, now gosh. then, <laughs> don't look so disapproving. On our super fit panel, we have, of course, the comedy legend Steve First, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, who's been doing all this? No, no, no. I had a go on that earlier as well. <laughs> it, is, it is a huge amount of fun. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I do feel slightly... Uh, it's just a bit of a weird thing to see at the beginning of this show. <laughs> I'm not saying it was unpleasant. <laughs> I just... It just... It was just a bit a bit odd. And it's even weirder now that he's filming an empty seat. <laughs> um, <laughs> which I film... A, that's a bit sinister. Um, I'm told you've got a big engagement coming up in Hastings. <clears throat> oh, God, I do. Well, I don't know if it's big. Um, it, it, it's a kind of... Uh, it, it, there's a yardstick of how famous you are. I've got to reopen the East Hill lift. Um, <laughs> Was Sterling Moss not available? Just... <laughs> Once again, poor Sterling Moss, who's he lying in a hospital with broken He's ankles. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm... Uh, it's really... I, I can retire happy now. I've, I've reopened a funicular. It's brilliant. Absolutely. <laughs> well, no, I will in three weeks. Yeah. Yeah, um, great. Right, no, no, sorry, I just saw Kirsty take off her gold pants. Sorry, I was slightly distracted. <laughs> uh, next to Larry, it's welcome back. No, sorry, next to Kirsty, it's welcome back, Larry Turner. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy having a go? Absolutely not. I thank God that I'm too old to be asked to do that. You were that. just telling me no, before I we came think... on about your exercise. Get on one of those. No, oh, I, I, think, no, I think you should have had a young, hunky man in not many clothes to balance things out. I'm going to have that tomorrow on this thing, actually. Yeah. Who wants a hunky man me. to do that? Me! Me! Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, you're in charge of the show. OK. It's <laughs> big of you, Larry. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> well, we might be able to sort it out. I don't know. Maybe our special guest will help. It's that funny bloke, Russell Kane, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for your go. <laughs> that was, uh... I'm glad my testosterone levels haven't risen to their full value yes. this early in the morning. Is it the only... It's the same with me in the mornings, it's not my time. I wouldn't, mind, I wouldn't mind having to go on the two-seater version of that. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep thinking of Bruno, but I think we'll leave that yeah. one there. Um, mm, mm. Now, Russell, of course, has been making quite a name for himself of late, uh, thanks to stints on Live at the Apollo, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here Now, and Big Brother's Big Mouth. Oh, no, and yet... <laughs> and yet the shining star of the comedy circuit only got into it because of a dare. That's right, yeah. I was, I was, working, in a, I was working in an office just doing, uh, working as a writer and I was trying to get short stories published and I kept sending them off, kept getting them rejected and a friend of mine said, oh, you should go to like a performance poetry night and read a story out or something. And someone else said, oh, you should try stand-up, it'd be quite funny, normally. <laughs> Obviously, I'm feeling a bit... <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> feeling a bit weird after the testosterone has drained from my body, <laughs> courtesy of the joyride. <laughs> I like the way some of the audience were just clapping blankly. <laughs> <laughs> you noticed too. <laughs> Warm up the transit van. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, and uh, so someone said stand up comedy. I've never been to see stand up comedy ever. I literally said how Had you co not? cocky and unpassionate I was. I feel terrible for these guys that are like, I wanted to do stand up since I was 14. It's all I've ever wanted to do. I just Googled stand up, clicked the first link, phoned the comedy cafe, and went and tried it. I went to see comedy a couple of times in the two weeks leading up to the gig. 
I got up, and because I didn't know what I was doing, everyone was like, oh, he's so original. <laughs> I just didn't have a clue what I was doing. <laughs> that wasn't originality, it was blagging. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've got not one, but two projects uh, on the go at the moment. There's a two-hander play called Fake Spear. Correct. And a stand-up tour as well, Dressage. Correct. Human Dressage. Human yeah. Dressage. Yeah. Um, let's start with Fake Spear, yeah. first of all. W what's it about? Uh, well, uh, there's not quite a lot of Shakespeare written up at the Edinburgh Festival. There's loads of, hey, look, it's Othello in hip hop or Romeo yeah. and Juliet in chaff. Hey, we've got our degrees from Oxbridge, let's turn them on their head. There's loads <laughs> of stuff like that. Uh, but no one had attempted to rewrite us to take a modern storyline set in Essex, my home county, and apply iambic pentameter to it. So the characters are fully Essex Gary, Sharon, Dave Uscio, Kevin Uscio, <laughs> but they can only speak with the poetic form of iambic pentameter. But they're reference points. They're gods, not the Greeks and the Romans. It's still the M25, the A13, Elizabeth Duke, <laughs> Wimpy, stuff like that. But they have to speak about it poetically. Now, of course, it's incredibly difficult because it's, it's, it's more like working with hip hop than anything because you've got to get the rhythm right, you've got to get into ten syllable lines, but it's like a classical. Do you know, it's so funny because Steve's just been in this play where, where the cover, which I think is coming to the West End, yeah, yeah. and that. There's a huge chunk of that, which I is am, a kind of I celebration about the iambic pentameter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is different. I mean, it's, well, you know, the, the, the rhythm of it. Once you get into the rhythm of it, it makes absolute sense. It's getting into that. That w w once you feel it, it's 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 just well, w why isn't everything written like this? Well, it's just got it's... the whole show in iambic pentameter magic. <laughs> well, yeah. no, but you probably are. That most English sentences are in by iambic pentameter anyway. There's a couple of spondies in there which threw me. Okay. <laughs> well, I've, I've, written, I've written a soliloquy for you, but when we've got time, I don't know when the right, the right time is. I've written, they told we're me to do, write... We're going to do a part on Shakespeare. Let, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll save it for then. I'm going to praise um... your male beauty later in the show, so we'll look forward to that. Oh, wow. But <laughs> you are... Work of fiction, but, is it? But we should point out, you are actually, you are actually married. I am married, yes, and yeah. And your wife is in the play, isn't the she? Comedi the comedians call my wife my beard, cos I walk round with her for show. <laughs> <I go> <laughs> and she's in the play, is she? Yeah, she plays uh, Sharon of Billericay, Donna of Billericay in this one. She plays Sharon in the last one. And I play Nigel of Rayleigh. Yes, Sadie. <laughs> Look at the dominant female grasping the last yes, male. Right? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes groom a silverback late at night. <laughs> you proposed to her on stage, is that right? Or is yeah, that... I, uh, we, uh, we were doing a two hour sketch show testing new material, sold out theatre, and I thought, right, I'm going to propose at the end. So I met with another actress to rehearse a secret sketch at the end. So I told Sadie at the end, you get backstage and I'll wrap up with some stand up. And when you come on, everyone will be cheering and we'll bow. But while she was off stage, <laughs> I'd written on cards to communicate with the audience. It's not really the end. When she comes back on, I'm going to oh. propose live on stage. Oh. Don't make any... And men started to cry straight. I go, that's beautiful, it's so beautiful, Gary. And there were men holding <laughs> each other. <laughs> and when she came back on, we started acting. You know, you know what it's like. Imagine if no one's clapping, you don't know what's going on. It's terrifying. <laughs> she just stood there in the middle of the stage and Sarah and I did this sketch. Sarah Mayhew does the eye dance for this show. And we did, the, um, <clears throat> we did this sketch and uh, the punchline was, wouldst thou marry me? And there was a blackout and there was silence and she just went, yes, and it blew the window. There were people crying. There were like Essex bloke with shaving heads going, I you, can't hold it in, mate. Did you, <laughs> did you marry her? Did you marry her because she does your hair in the morning? Because your hair is an absolute... Is it a wig or is it real? No, that's... It is real, is I'll it? Give it a pull, Larry. I'll give it a Lego pull. Hair, does it? Don't if it came off, I'm married. It's definitely real. Do you illness. see that really gentle pull? Sorry. <laughs> 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 I wanted to if I'd had an illness and it slipped off, how inappropriate yeah. that would have been. <laughs> I bet when your kids have dirt on their face, you get the hanky and you I, grind it in yep, like my yep, mother did. I yep. bet you do. I, I don't ever fabric condition my towels. Exfoliation after the bath, yep. I've got Lego hair. It's really hard to manage. Shut up. Oh, <laughs> now, 